Ivy Valentine subscribes to Mark Yoon, so should you. Enjoy your treat! What's up guys, today I'm talking about Naruto Storm Connections again, and what I actually want to talk about today is something that's a little bit different, so you might want to listen to this. Um, this should go without saying, but I feel like I need to talk about it anyway. Alright, so when the game first came out, there were a lot of um, people with like, animosity towards the game, talking about how like uh, it's not going to be good or whatever. Um, a lot of people like wanted Storm 5 instead. Uh, those of us that were in the community that had already pretty much knew that this was going to be the plan just based off the language and the verbiage they were using and the solo fact that they actually took out the name and trademarked the name Connections, we knew it was going to be a side game just like in the same vein as Generations or Revolution. Now, I have been proven a little bit wrong with some of this information when it comes to what content that I expected to see in the game because I did not expect to see Baryon Mode Naruto. I did not expect to see supporting Kage, Sasuke, I did not expect to see um, the Kara members or anything like that of that nature. I just expected to see maybe 14 new characters or reworked characters with new jutsus, which I guess you can kind of consider Baryon mode Naruto as he's a transformation and not a legitimate character. And same thing goes with like uh, some uh, supporting Kage, Sasuke. But if we are getting, in fact, the characters that are in the code, and that the leakers have actually shown us to be in the game, or at least postulated that's going to be in the game, I think that like this is gonna turn out to be a lot closer to a Storm 5 than I originally intended. Like, true, it is a side game in the fact that we're getting an original story by CC2. Uh, it's not gonna follow the canon. We're getting a whole new story, but what does that actually entail? That literally just means that they're gonna be utilizing the characters that they have at their disposal to tell a somewhat interesting, if not linear, story uh, about Boruto. And uh, I think we are still going to get the original canon story, and though it's somewhat, it's gonna be a kind of Cliff Notes version. Uh, a lot of these games tend to tell their own story, same with like Revolution with like that tournament arc thing on the island. Uh, but they even had an entire story mode dedicated to Mecha Naruto because he was a brand new character at the time. So I think we can expect to see something similar with this. We're going to be getting the original story in some form or fashion, whether it be just like a couple of quick battles uh, for each saga <laughs> or just something to actually tell the story in a linear way just to have another mode to play in the game, another sort of single player mode. I think their CC2 is definitely going to do something like that. We're not going to get anything as crazy expansive as like an open world to explore anything. We definitely will get a linear open world, which is what we've had from Storm 2 up through currently. Um, even though I still consider Storm 1 kind of linear, even though Konoha is open, it's just Konoha. So uh, the village in the leaves is not very big in that game. So it's not something that's like as crazy as like a, a, a huge open world, but I actually enjoyed it and it was similar to what they did with Ultimate Ninja 3 where you can explore Konoha. So there was a lot of verticality to that and a lot of openness to that. And to somewhat some of the degree, you could still do that in 2, it's just the fact that they made linear paths for those, similar to like Demon Slayer Hinokami Chronicles. Now a couple things that we already know about the game is like it is going to be an Unreal Engine 4. They said it's going to be developed within the same engine as Hinokami Chronicles, which is Unreal Engine 4. And I've already seen a lot of people say, well, the game doesn't look that different from Storm 4. Well, going with cel-shaded graphics, it's not going to look that different. The point is to get it as close to an actual anime art aesthetic that it could possibly get to without, like, you know, going against the grain of the art vision. We're not going to be seeing, like, super, like, rendered stuff, like, like, highly detailed textures and whatnot that, like, the Unreal Engine 4 was capable of. Uh, I still think Unreal Engine 4 is a downgrade. It would have been better if they did it on Unreal Engine 5, but I can see them using their resources to build the engine up from that just to put uh, import the assets into Unreal Engine 4 because CC2 reutilizes a lot of assets for the Naruto Storm series. So if they do utilize 5 with a possible Storm 4, it's a lot easier to import those characters into that engine being from the same engine family and then being able to add textures and whatever they need to do to upscale that to whatever 4K rendering they're going to do for that. Um, I do think that like I'm excited, I'm highly, highly excited for this game now just because of the fact that once they gave us like Baryon mode, I'm like, okay, well, all bets are off at this point. Like we can literally get like whatever 
they want to give us. Like they, they want to get us like the Awaken Kawaki and Boruto. Like cool that like they can give it to us. They want to give us all the Kara members. I don't think they'll give us all of them. They'll probably give us like three maybe of the members. And I still think they want to save a bunch of stuff for Storm 5, if Storm 5 is still in the pipeline down the road, but I don't think they're going to end it on a side game. They'll probably end it on like a big grandiose like ultimate Storm game, uh, somewhat similar to what Dragon Ball Budokai series ended with with um, Infinite World. Even though I think that some people would say that Budokai didn't end with Infinite World, it kind of ended with Burst Limit, but they were just, they were, you know, developed at the same time. And then the Shin Budokai series on the PSP is a whole nother animal. But what I wanted you guys to say, and what I'm being long-winded about and getting to the point, is that like, though we have this great news coming out, um, to kind of set our expectations kind of low and to temper our expectations, because I just don't want this game to get like trashed because we expect it to be a Storm 5, even though they're giving us more than we intended with a side game, if that makes any sense. Um, price point wise, I'm expecting this to be a normal price point, so we're looking at like, um, $59.99 on like the Switch and maybe like $65 or $69.99 on the PS5 and that series. Um, PS4 price point might be like around $60, but uh, the other problem I'm worried about is crossplay. I know a lot of people have been asking in my comment section about crossplay specifically. The problem with crossplay is that not that's not up to the developers and it's not even up to the publisher really. That's really up to the platforms that the game is being hosted on. They have to open their servers because they all have different servers, even though it's the same game. Uh, and the different architecture of those platforms needs to be accepting of like a cross play between them. And that takes a lot of time and resources and money, honestly. And it's something I think I feel like the budget could be better focused on the game itself. And CC2 is not really known for having a good netcode as it is. So I'm a little bit worried that if they did have cross play with this game, with the netcode not being changed that much, evident by uh, <laughs> Hinokami Chronicles, then I think then we might be, it might be a wasted like tool because like we're not even gonna be able to use the the mechanics properly like the game's gonna stutter online and we're gonna have an insane amount of drop flames from frames from playing from a different platform like playing from there's a reason why there's so few games that actually do cross platform like that like cool we get like fortnite and like what else is there like minecraft or whatever but like there's not like many games that are actually like multi-faceted everybody can play with everybody kind of thing in the ecosystem it's because the architecture is so different. Like the background architecture, I'm talking about the like makeup of the actual consoles themselves. I'm talking about how their uh, their their databases are used, what storage systems they use, how their network runs, like what bandwidth like protocols they have backed up into their HTML or C++ or whatever like code that they're using. There's a a ton of different variables that go into internets being connectivity like between each other and we already have a hard time dealing with Japan servers all the time like a lot of these fighting games that we come out with are like still Japan based servers and then when we have like we play like stateside like we're getting really horrible netcode so it doesn't hurt help that like in a place like America or like the UK for example like we don't have the greatest internet there's some internet hubs that are like really good and then there's other places throughout the country that like really have crap internet so whenever they do peer-to-peer -peer, like they're probably gonna do I doubt we're getting a rollback whenever we do peer-to-peer -peer for that kind of thing we're reliant on the weaker of the web sources to give us our experience so it doesn't matter if we have like gigabit internet if somebody else is like running on like $35 cricket internet or hotspot or something like that like no ethernet port like we're gonna be the ones suffering from that uh, I've had countless interactions with that and it's the main reason why I like choose to only play pretty much with friends unless I'm doing a tournament or something but this is getting way out of there what can we expect I think we can expect definitely more characters as I've said before the side games have always given us 14 new characters at least so this is probably what we should similarly expect here I think we might actually get more for this I'm saying maybe around 20 new characters we're definitely gonna get reworked characters hopefully the balancing issues are at least amended if not gone and I think that like I'm still hoping for this game to be uh, as great as it possibly can be so in the last video I asked a poll on my community tab and I actually asked them what character are you more interested in playing or what character are you are you wanting the most out of the, the trailer that we just showed in the last video between Baryon Mode Naruto and and supporting Kage Sasuke and 70% of the voters voted for 
Naruto Baryon mode and 30% went to Sasuke um, supporting Kage. So that was pretty interesting to me because uh, there's a lot of Uchiha fans out there, but I can see why Baryon mode is so wanted. It's like what the penultimate form of Naruto and his relationship with with uh, the Kyuubi. So let's just see um, what new characters we get. I don't think we're getting anything crazy like a future version of like Salada, but I also did see a, uh, a screenshot of a mysterious Sharingan that is not a Sharingan that I'm familiar with, so maybe we're getting a new Uchiha with this or somebody with an awakened Sharingan that wasn't awakened before. Uh, I'll show that here. But anyway, that's going to be the video for today, guys. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please uh, vote on the next poll so you can show up in the next video. Comments, I usually talk about the comments, too, of those polls. You can also join the Discord and bring the conversation over there or in the comment section down below. Any and all thoughts are always welcome, guys. And as I always say, I love it. Thank you. And thank you.